sometimes it's a histamine problem. In my own personal case, um, if I eat salmon, I know I have to stay at home. So I've got the choice. Either I eat the salmon and suffer the consequences, which I've chosen to do, or I cannot eat the salmon. Or Jane, my, my nutritionist in my office, uh, has introduced me to some of the antihistamine type products that work well. I'm just not comfortable taking them. The whole histamine thing, isn't that also related to the gut? So, I mean, some of it will be produced in your, um, I guess, other <clears throat> organs. But in general, most of the, um, the enzymes that break down histamines are in your small intestine. And so wouldn't the thought be that if you work on um, making the small intestine work better, the, there, you should have less histamine responses. But what I am noticing also is that carnivores seem to all of a sudden have more histamine reactions. Any thoughts on that? Right. You're absolutely correct. Now, again, that's a misused name, the word histamine. What you're talking about is intestinal inflammation. And whether that is antibody inflammation, antigen antibody, whether it's cellular inflammation, whether it's damage to the intestinal lining, it, the word histamine has become this catch-all phrase, yes. like using the word Hoover for a vacuum cleaner uh, or Kleenex for a tissue. Mm -hmm. It is a very specific, narrow, focused word when used in science, but it's, it covers now in the lay, and that's the concern with the internet is everybody is talking about this histamine reaction. They have no idea what it means. They just heard it from, you know, uh, uh, Bob the uh, blogger on, on, I'm Bob the blogger, by the way, Robert Sivers. Uh, but, but the point is that there are specific inflammatory reactions that get triggered by certain antigens. The classic one is celiac disease, which is gluten and gliadin, which affects every human being some at a subclinical rate, some at a clinical rate. And that's why one of the first things we do is to remove grains. There are, when you call histamine reactions, there are reactions, really what it's about is, is your intestinal uh, immune system going nuclear against a little bug. It's an overreaction by the intestine to a small trigger. And one of the cool things about insulin sensitivity, which you get from being mostly carnivore, is all of those inflammatory markers in the intestine, in the blood system, in the interstitial system, and intracellular markers, and we test for all of those, they all go down. So instead of the soldiers being on the street ready to go and shoot somebody, the soldiers are hanging out in their barracks. They're ready to go, but they're just chilling out and having a beer and waiting for some action. So understanding the, the way the inflammatory system works in the gut is important. There's antigen antibody interactions, then there's cellular immunity. And part of what you want to know about your gut is how ramped up is it or how quiescent is it? And what a carnivore diet does is it just says, boys, chill out, boys and girls, chill out, go back to your barracks. And they calm down that inflammatory system, but the guys are ready to go. So when I eat salmon, there's something in salmon that irritates my gut and I have an overreaction and it's only to salmon and everybody's going to have their little quirks and you've got the choice then. But I think to use, I was incorrect in using the word histamine okay. for something that I don't quite I can't pinpoint exactly what it is, but I know what it is. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, when I looked into, because there was a period where all my clients would come to me and say, I have a histamine response. I'm having, you know, and then I started researching it and you know, there are some, um, some some research shows that histamine receptors are in certain parts of the body and then other ones that uh, the science shows that it's everything, right? Like any allergic response from food or um, anything is a histamine response. And so you need to take antihistamine. So I completely understand where you're coming from. Um, but I do see that in general, uh, people tend to say, well, I've been meat-based for a while and now I added a plant or I added a different type of meat that I was once intolerant to. And now I'm showing sensitivities. And I think when you are saying that these um, people are, you know, the, your immune system is kind of ready to respond, that makes a lot of sense to me, um, especially if you eliminate something. And then if your body is running really well, it'll show like, hey, I'm not a fan of you eating that. And I've had a similar reaction to salmon once. I started getting really itchy when I had no issues to salmon before. And we see that commonly. It depends on, on where those, and sometimes they're immune reactions. Sometimes they're enzyme reactions. I'll give you a classic 
uh, example, I've, I have a number of patients who for a while say, oh, somebody on the internet told them dairy was really bad. So now they're off dairy. Dairy does this to me and dairy does that to me. And uh, the fact that they, so they exist because of dairy, they don't quite comprehend because all children can't survive without dairy. Right. Um, having said which, let's say they go off dairy for a year or six months, or you have a really bad gastroenteritis. Uh, the lactase, the enzyme that breaks down milk products, and, and it's not just lactase, there, there are proteins in milk as well as uh, um, the lactase, but the lactase, lactose intolerance, which everybody quotes erroneously, that enzyme lives in the very tip of the villi of the uh, intestine. Mm-hmm. And if you don't drink milk, why do you have to have the lactase enzyme? So your body removes those. And then if you have a glass of milk, you've got no way to break that down. So the milk creates this awful reaction. But it doesn't mean you're necessarily lactose intolerant. And even if you're lactose intolerant, lactose is actually a form of sugar. Mm -hmm. But it's the the most common intolerances to milk are not to milk, to the the sugar. It's to the proteins in milk. And that's why a beverage company called Coca-Cola that you might have heard of are now making these protein-free uh, there's A and a B protein, and they're removing one of those proteins from their milk, which is less allergenic. But uh, those are all ways in which people come to erroneous uh, uh, conclusions and then swear adamantly that this is the problem without having any proof. And, and that's my concern with nutrition, because we've got the vegans going ballistic about it. We've got the carnivores going ballistic. We've got everybody going crazy with assumptions. And they may be correct, they may not be correct, but at least before you open your mouth, figure out what the truth is. Or if you're going to speak, say, I really don't have evidence to this, but here's what my thoughts are. 